Hey, it's Lou Bortone with LouBortone.com, and today's presentation is called Secrets of Social Video. How to supercharge your sales with the power of video and social media. So what we're going to cover today is talking about YouTube as a social network. I mean, YouTube really is a social network, and we'll talk about that and how to maximize it. We will also talk about the power of video and social media, combining video with social media. We're going to talk a little bit about using other visual social platforms like Pinterest. And we will go over five easy ways, new uses for social video, how you can start using it today to extend your reach and influence and visibility. So we'll jump right in, but first a little bit about me, in case you don't know who I am. I spent uh, more than 20 years in the television business with companies like Fox and E! Entertainment Television, and I've been doing video marketing since before the days of YouTube. Can you imagine a whopping, how long has YouTube been around? Six, seven years? So, okay, so that's not so long, but YouTube has changed things immensely, and uh, it's been very exciting. Uh, my background is in marketing and branding. I was a marketing and brandy executive and promotion executive at some of the groovy logos and companies that you see here on the slide. So enough about me. First things first though, uh, what I want to try and impress upon you today is that you really have to change the way you think about video. You have to change your entire mindset when it comes to online video and stop thinking of it as some big, overwhelming, techie production, and just start thinking of it as a simple way to connect. Now, video comes in many forms, slideshows, photo montages, live webcasts, video email, video conferencing, but it's all video. I know some folks say, well, a PowerPoint that's narrated isn't a video. Sure it is. It's a visual message. It's a video. So change the way you think. Keep an open mind. Don't let it get overwhelming and just think of it as a way to connect. So let's talk a little bit about some video myths and misconceptions. For some reason, the misconception isn't up there, but that's okay. Anyway, the perception is that video is way too technical. And the reality is, as I will try and show you in this presentation, it really couldn't be any simpler. There's also a perception or misconception that video is very expensive and that you need a ton of equipment when, as I'm going to show you here, most of the tools are free. So it doesn't cost anything to get started. A lot of people think that video needs to be really slick and professional and the truth is that content trumps quality. If you have engaging content and a powerful message, you don't have to worry as much about all the bells and whistles. Uh, there's also a commonly held misconception that YouTube is just for kids and teenagers. And the truth is that YouTube is mainstream with a very broad demographic and is being used by businesses and brands and ad agencies. And it's not just for kids anymore. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about why video marketing rocks. Well, obviously with video, you can generate more web traffic. You can improve your search engine rankings. The uh, G is behind the little clapboard there. You can increase conversions and sales. You can build a bigger list more quickly. You can create stronger relationships with your customers. And ultimately, you can reach a much bigger audience. Now, You've heard the expression, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, somebody actually did the research. I think it was Forrester Research that said one minute of video is actually worth 1.8 million words. So thank you, Forrester Research, for clearing that up for us. So needless to say, a video can be very, very powerful. And for those of us who don't like writing, uh, you can certainly save yourself a lot of words by doing video. Now, why use video? I want to show you um, pieces of an infographic that I found that has some really interesting statistics about video. First one is that 52% of consumers say that product videos help to make 
purchase decisions. So promote your video, promote your product with a video, and you've got a very good chance of selling that product. Next, visitors who view product videos are 85% more likely to buy than visitors who do not. Another compelling reason why to use video. Need more? Well, how about this? 144% products are more likely to be purchased with videos. And still more compelling statistics on why to use video. With proper optimization, video increases the chance of a front page Google result by 53%. Now, we probably knew this or heard about it, but here it is in black and white and purple. With proper optimization, video increases the chance of front page Google results by 53%. So you want to get found, you want to get on Google, you want to get on the first page, video, video, video. So video is the future and my message to you is it's time to lead, follow, or get out of the way. Let's talk a little bit about the video profit connection before we dive into the uh, meat and potatoes here. You can use video to establish an immediate personal and powerful connection to your clients and prospects. This is how you create a video to profit connection. Why do I say this? Because video accelerates the sales process. It will get you to the buy button sooner. It dramatically increases the know, like, and trust factor and that is what increases the uh, accelerates the sales process because video breaks through the clutter and makes you more memorable. Now you really kind of have to start with YouTube with any discussion of online video because pretty much all roads lead to YouTube. Uh, YouTube is a great hub or headquarters platform for your videos. Um, part of the reason for that is that they have easy one-click sharing to other sites from YouTube. It's free. It's a free video hosting service. You don't have to worry about uh, hosting your video or where your video lives. It's also a great place to connect and be social. Now, when I talk about YouTube as a social medium, I mean, YouTube is certainly social and it meets all the uh, requirements and all the aspects of a true social medium like Facebook, Twitter, etc. YouTube is interactive. YouTube is a two-way conversation. Again, I'm sorry, the uh, letters got chopped off there by the logo. Uh, YouTube is easily shareable. Now think about it. When you go on YouTube, there are all kinds of ways to interact with YouTube. YouTube allows you to friend, subscribe, share, like, respond, email, embed, comment, add to a playlist, and even start a Google Plus Hangout. So there are plenty of ways to interact on YouTube. It's very dynamic and interactive, very social, and you should think of it as a social network, and it will help you to optimize your videos on YouTube when you think of it as a social medium. So let me show you a little bit in, in a few screenshots here why I believe YouTube is such a great social network. Here on YouTube, you've got like buttons. When you Once your video is uploaded, you'll see that there's a like button. There's a share button on the top there. Now, if you click the share button, a menu, another menu will appear with all of these options for sharing your video. You can share your video to Facebook, to Twitter, to Google+. You can see the buttons here on the right-hand side. And if you want more sharing options, you click the other drop-down menu, and then you've got Orkut and Tumblr and Blogger and MySpace and LinkedIn and StumbleUpon, all of these places that you can share your video with one click. So you upload once to YouTube and you share it again and again and again. You can also embed the video by taking the embed code that they give you and putting that on your website or blog. And of course, you can email the link to your video in an e-zine or in an email to your list or to your followers. And because YouTube is so well integrated with Google and is owned by Google, you can also start a Google Hangout, which is a video chat. You can start a Google Hangout right from within your video on YouTube. So it is very social, it is very easy to share, 
and you should take advantage of all of these sharing options when you have a video on YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, uh, it is the second largest search engine. People are using it now as a search engine to find solutions to their problems and answers to their questions. As I mentioned earlier, it has a broad demographic. The biggest demographic is actually not teenagers watching skateboarding cats, but it is 18 to 54 year olds. So they have a very mainstream broad demographic. They get two billion, with a B, two billion views per day. I think you would want to be part of that. And 35 hours of content is uploaded to YouTube every minute. So you want to get your slice of that 2 billion viewer pie. Also, as I mentioned earlier, brands are using YouTube. And 94 of Ad Age's top 100 advertisers have used YouTube. Again, sorry, the type got cut off there, but you get the point. Let's talk a little bit about YouTube and, and some YouTube basics, YouTube 101. With YouTube, when you upload video, uh, one and done is not a good strategy. One and done doesn't work with YouTube. It's like posting you know, one post on Facebook or one tweet and thinking that uh, that's gonna work miracles. You really have to be consistent and the more you post to YouTube, the more traffic you will get. When you create a video for YouTube, always include a compelling call to action. So many people forget this. And uh, it's like, you know, just one of the main things that you really need to do on YouTube at the end of your video. Make sure you tell your viewer what to do next. Include a compelling call to action. What do you want your viewer to do? If you don't tell them, they're going to be off down another rabbit hole or off watching another video. So make sure that you include a strong, direct, compelling call to action in every video that you create. Now, you want to upload your video properly and optimize uploading, and we'll show you how to do that in a moment. And that's a matter of using the correct keywords and having a good title and a good description. And we'll show you a little bit more about that in a bit. You have the option and should use the option to add captions or annotations. Again, this is a great way to re-emphasize your call to action. You can put a caption or an annotation at the end of your video that has your website URL or, or what you want the viewer to do next. Uh, if you decide to edit your video, you can actually edit right on YouTube. So YouTube has a built-in editor and it's a pretty good one and you can use it to edit your video. It's very easy to use. You don't need to uh, learn any new software. Don't need to, it doesn't matter whether you're on a Mac or a PC, use the, vi the video editor that's right on YouTube. And then finally, as we showed you in the slide before, make sure you share that video to Facebook and Twitter. Use the sharing options and the one-click sharing to get your video out in as many places as possible. When you go to YouTube, although YouTube loves to make changes, uh, Typically, the dashboard looks something like this. They've got a new dashboard that gives you all kinds of groovy things to look at and see and do as they're trying to make their uh, interface a little bit less complicated. On the top, you see you've got a video manager, video editor, which I mentioned earlier, with, which is where you can edit your videos on YouTube. You've got your subscriptions up there if you are subscribed to other people's videos. And of course, there's analytics. And then on the lower left-hand column, you'll see the dashboard where we are now. And uploads, playlists, history, etc. So plenty of ways to uh, navigate YouTube. And again, on the top right, you're always going to find the upload button on the top, the very top. So let's take it another look and see what else we can show you within YouTube. When you upload a video to YouTube, there are three main areas that you need to be concerned with. The title, the description, and the tags. So you're uploading a video, you have to enter a title, you want that title to be descriptive and preferably to have your keywords in it. Um, you want to have a description, that description can be uh, pretty much as long as you want. They give you a ton of space. So this isn't a very good example. I didn't really take advantage of this. But what I did do, what you should do, is always start your description with the URL 
of the website that you want people to go to because that becomes a live link back to your site. So you see I have it highlighted here, the HTTP, the whole deal. Include that link right at the very beginning and it will become a link back to your site. Uh, again, you can use keywords in the description. You can make the description long, longer if necessary. And then the tags are your keywords. So whatever keywords you want to use, uh, that's what you put in the tag section. Again, um, YouTube also gives you the option of selecting one of three video thumbnails. And then you can use the privacy settings to set your video to public if you want everyone to see it, which I assume you do, or private if you only want a few people to see it, or unlisted if you don't want uh, people to necessarily stumble upon it. Uh, and then pick a category, people and blogs, etc. Moving right along. The other thing that you can do with, oops, uh, with YouTube is customize your channel. So if you go to your channel settings in the upper right hand side, you'll see something there below the YouTube logo that says channel settings. And that's where you can basically control the look and the environment of your channel. And you can customize it and brand it and make it look more like the rest of your brand by going into the channel settings and uh, changing the colors of settings. Um, what I've done is I've taken the the same background that I use on my website on lubortone.com and as I've made that the background of my YouTube channel and just that small move alone helps to brand this and makes it consistent with my other sites so I've got the same background on my Twitter background the same background on my website and the same background on my YouTube channel you can also uh, control which videos play you can add a bio here on the right hand side you can uh, create playlists to make it easier for people to find and sort through your videos. So it's just a good way to, to brand your channel and control the way that it all looks and works. Again, for uploading, the upload page uh, hasn't changed much. You see that there's an upload button in the upper right that I have uh, in the little purple square there. And, or you can simply drag and drop your files from your computer right onto this interface here to upload them. Uh, you can upload multiple files. You can choose more than one file. You can actually record video from your webcam directly to YouTube. A lot of folks don't realize that you can do that. Um, or again, drag and drop the videos on the page and they will begin uploading automatically. So it's very easy to upload your videos from your um, files from your computer to YouTube and then again on the bottom you'll see that there are, there's a called activity sharing this little heading there and that's where you connect your accounts you only have to do this once but you connect your Facebook account your Twitter account etc so that you will be able to have those one-click sharing options so be sure to connect your social media accounts with your YouTube account Another thing that you can do within YouTube, uh, which is a neat little trick, is edit your video or enhance your video. They have a setting called Enhancements, and this will allow you to make adjustments or enhancements to your video, whether you want to trim the video a little bit on the front or back, or if you uh, had like a, a case of the shaky cams while you were doing your video and you want to stabilize it. There are quick fixes that you can do with audio and video. There are also some settings on the right hand side that allow you to play with the color and contrast. And again, this is just a matter of experimenting or if you want to try and make your video look a little bit different or a little bit more professional, you can use the enhancements feature to clean up your video or to uh, make minor changes to it. Another thing that YouTube now gives you uh, is called analytics and this is really a treasure trove of information. Um, before, you know, the statistics weren't quite as rich, but now there are a lot of things that you can find out about traffic sources and demographics and playback and all kinds of cool things that you can find out about your video, who's watching it, how are they watching it, where are they watching it, where are they coming from. Uh, so all of that is within the analytics section of YouTube. It used to be called YouTube Insights, it's now Analytics, and uh, there's a lot more information there than there used to be, which is great if you want to 
study your videos and find out how to improve future videos. Now if you're using your own uh, hosting, be sure to add share buttons so that you are encouraging people to pass along your video and share it. Um, most of the self-hosting sites will al allow you to add share buttons. Um, I'll tell you about a couple of those in a moment. But the easier you make it for viewers to share your videos, the more chances you have to generate views and engagement. And the three uh, ways that I like to create your own video player, um, again, if you're using your own video player, uh, is easyvideoplayer.com, which is a popular one where you can control the environment and add buttons and change the way the player looks and things like that. Another favorite is easywebvideo.com and easywebvideo also hosts the video which is a huge bonus as well so if you use easywebvideo you can host your video there and you can also control the look and feel of the player and the entire environment in which your video plays. Uh, another popular option is wistia.com and wistia now has a free version Again, all, all, these, um, all of these uh, plugins or softwares allow you to control the environment in which your video plays. So if you're using your own player, you can look at a couple of options such as those. Now let's talk a little bit about video and Facebook. Facebook is actually the third largest site for watching videos. So a lot of people are watching video on Facebook. It is my favorite place to post videos because I get a lot of interaction and comments there. It's ideal for getting comments and for sharing and for tagging, but when you do tag people, basically if you post a video to, pay, to Facebook, you can tag people who are in the video and then the video will show up on their page as well. But tag with care, don't randomly tag people just because, oh, I want so-and-so to see my video. Um, that's kind of spammy so tag with care but again it is a great way to get folks to uh, to drive people to the video and have them see your video on Facebook so what I like to do because I don't like to randomly tag people but one of the great ways that you can use Facebook to uh, generate a lot of visibility and interaction is to do photo video montages so one of the things that I like to do is if I'm going to a conference or if I'm speaking at a conference, I may make a video of my fellow speakers and instructors. So what I did for a conference called NAMS last year, NAMS 7, Niche Affiliate Marketing System, um, which is a conference in Atlanta for internet marketers. And I was speaking at NAMS and several of my colleagues were speaking, so I created a photo montage highlighting all of the speakers. So I was able to tag all of those folks on Facebook, like Carrie Wilkerson and others, and the video showed up on their pages as well. Now, obviously that um, creates a lot of buzz and interaction. Once you're done with that video, you can also share it with the share button on your own timeline, on a friend's timeline, within a particular group, or on your own page. So once you've got your video done, be sure to share it and pass it along using the share button. So the other thing you'll notice is once you create your photo montage and you've tagged folks who are in the video, you're going to notice a lot of engagement, a lot of interaction, a lot of comments. Uh, now, you know, most of these folks were featured in the video because it was a montage. So uh, again, uh, Andrea Val's photo here on the top, you can see her photo and down about three quarters of the way down you can see that she commented because the video appeared on her page uh, along with many many other folks who I included in the video. Again it's a great way to get engagement and interaction and to get your video uh, shared and seen in a lot of places. So how I create that video montage, or how I created this particular one for the NAMS instructors work was, I had photos of all the people who were speaking at NAMS, which I got from Facebook, and I put them all into a uh, video creator called OneTrueMedia.com, 
and I was able to create this montage pretty quickly and easily just by using photos and some text. I had a little title slide at the beginning and you can mix and match these photos and add music and One True Media puts together a lovely little montage for you and this is the uh, montage that I use on Facebook. I had 35 slides, you know, approximately 33 or 34 instructors from NAMS included them all here, put the video together on One True Media, and then uploaded it to Facebook. So OneTrueMedia.com was my secret weapon for creating photo video montages like this one. Um, and again, another way you can do the same thing is with a site called Stupaflix.com. Silly name, great site. Stupaflix.com, same concept. You pull in the photos, you mix and match the photos, you add a title slide to the beginning, you add some music, and Stupaflix does the rest. So it really is as easy as um, pulling in some photos, selecting some music, and then outputting your video, uh, which turns out as a really cool looking video montage. And it looks very professional, very slick. Uh, very cool music that you can use that won't get you in trouble because they give you a lot of choices for music. And you can pick different styles of different uh, templates. And again, Stupaflex kind of does all the work behind the scenes and you've got yourself a really cool looking video. So what that looks like when it's done is it turns into a whole uh, cool little video that you created on Stupaflex. And once it's done, you can like it, you can... Um, give it to Google Plus, you can tweet it, you can share it via email, um, you can re-edit it if you don't like the way that it came out, but again it's really easy to create a photo video montage using stupaflix.com and once it's created you have a lot of ways to share it and spread it around. So I encourage you to uh, check that out, experiment with it, um, put some photos in there and you'll see what a cool looking montage you can make with very little effort. And again it's free just like One True Media. Uh, there are paid versions of these sites that have more bells and whistles, but the free versions are uh, pretty cool, and uh, there's a lot you can do with them. So, One True Media is free, Stupaflix is free. You can go in there and check them out and see uh, what you can create. Now, video and Twitter. Um, Twitter is also a really important site for video and to share your video because one auto shared tweet results in six new YouTube sessions. So Twitter is driving a lot of YouTube viewing because people are posting links to their videos on Twitter, as should you. Now Twitter drives video viewing. It's really ideal for video sharing and engagement because it is so ubiquitous. Uh, remember, if you post your video link to Twitter, shorten the video link so that other people can retweet it and pass it along. You want to leave them space to be able to retweet. Um, and now a video posted from YouTube to Twitter can actually be viewed in stream, that is, without leaving Twitter. So viewers can watch the video right within Twitter without having to go back to YouTube. And that looks something like this. Uh, when you tweet a video link like this, Video VIP Accelerated Coaching Program via YouTube, um, I shared this from YouTube and you come over to twi Twitter and you can play it within Twitter. And you can see the video pops up right there. Um, you can hide the video or you can show the video, but if people click on the link, the video will pop up right within Twitter and they can watch the video right there without having to leave Twitter. So do not leave out Twitter when you are thinking of your video plans. It's a great way to share and pass along your video and get others to retweet it and pass it along as well. Now we should also talk a little bit about LinkedIn because a lot of folks don't realize you can share video on LinkedIn. You can share your video from YouTube to LinkedIn or you can share your video from a website called slideshare.net which is now actually owned by LinkedIn so if you connect your slideshare.net account to LinkedIn or use the slideshare.net app within LinkedIn, you can share and post videos to LinkedIn. Slideshare is my favorite way of doing that. Um, and you'll see here, if you share a video from uh, YouTube to LinkedIn, which is also a great way to do it, it will show up 
right there on your LinkedIn page. So really easy way to share video is from YouTube. Or if you decide you want to share it from slideshare.net, you just open up a free account on Slideshare. Um, I opted to try the paid account just to see because it has more bells and whistles. But again, you can do this for free and share uh, your presentations via slideshare.net. And then you go to LinkedIn and add the slideshare.net app and that will allow you to share what you have on Slideshare to LinkedIn. That's pretty cool. So when you go to LinkedIn, on my LinkedIn account, for example, I have my Slideshare presentations because the Slideshare app has pulled in all of the videos and PowerPoints that I uploaded to Slideshare and now those are viewable on LinkedIn. Now, again, Slideshare is primarily for slideshows and presentations and PowerPoints and PDFs. So I have a lot of plain old PDF PowerPoints uploaded here. But you can also upload video to slideshare.net and that video can then be shared to LinkedIn. So it's a great way to get um, videos onto LinkedIn. Let's talk a little bit about video and Pinterest. Everybody's new favorite site. Everybody's enamored with Pinterest and they should be because it has grown so fast. Now as you know you can upload photos to Pinterest. Um, those photos can link to videos or you can actually upload videos to Pinterest. I have a, uh, a board, Pinterest board, called Fun Videos and I've actually uploaded a photo from that video and when you click on the photo from the video you're taken to the video. So yes you can upload video to Pinterest and you can pin videos. So let's go back to that SlideShare example now. Um, I have a SlideShare video um, presentation and I pinned that to Pinterest so that now that SlideShare video and the link to the video is on Pinterest. And you click that and you can watch the video. So it isn't just um, photos um, or infographics, which you can see I also have infographics posted here that I created on Pinterest. But yes, you can pin videos and that is a great way to get some exposure for your videos. You can see the other cool thing about Pinterest is that when you pin a video to Pinterest, the video opens and plays right within Pinterest. So that's really cool. I mean, you can just play the video right there on Pinterest. And then Pinterest gives you even more ways to share that video with a Facebook like button or a tweet button. You can embed it. You can email it. So once you're on Pinterest, you can continue to share that video. So Pinterest has turned out to be a great site for video and a great way to share videos. Now last but not least, we should uh, give a nod to Google+. Plus. After all, Google owns YouTube, so you can share video on Google+. Plus. Um, going back to this NAMS video that I created on Stupaflix, I was able to share that on Google+, Plus and pick the circles of people that I wanted to see the video so you can post to Google Plus and you can also share from YouTube to Google Plus and this is what the video will look like within Google Plus when you share it directly from YouTube. Uh, easy to share again it's one click sharing from YouTube to Google Plus so take advantage of it and share your video on Google Plus as well. So let's look at five ways to make social videos. Uh, we're going to talk about powering up your PowerPoint, photo video montages, we'll talk about video interview nirvana, how to share the love with live stream, and how to connect with video email. So five different ways to create social videos that we'll go through right now. The first and probably easiest way to create a video, social video, is PowerPoint to video. And basically just create your PowerPoint or use Keynote if you happen to be on a Mac, that's what this is that we're doing here. 
And if you're on a PC, you go to the command for slideshow and go to record narration. On a Mac, it's even easier because you can do it on the fly. You may want to record your finished presentation on Camtasia as a backup, which is what I'm doing here, and then save the entire thing as a video file. And you've turned a PowerPoint into a video. So you'll see here for the PC, you'll see where you record the narration here. You go on to slideshow and then there is a command for record narration. And that will allow you to um, basically record or narrate your PowerPoint like we're doing here on this presentation. And if you want to save it as a video, very, very easy to do from a Mac, from a PC, uh, you probably need to have something like Camtasia to record the, the entire presentation. Uh, again, if you're on a Mac, you just basically share the presentation and you can save it as a keynote, a PowerPoint, PDF, or even as a movie. So uh, Mac makes it really, really easy with the keynote, which is like their version of PowerPoint. The next way to make a social video is, and I mentioned this earlier, slideshare.net, which I consider to be sort of a sleeping giant. They were recently acquired by LinkedIn. You can, on Slideshare, upload any PowerPoint or PDF presentation. It's free. It's easy to use. Then you can add to your LinkedIn profile. And if you have the uh, affordable paid version, you can also upload videos. And this is a way to get really great exposure for content that you may already have. For example, I had a PowerPoint presentation. Again, this wasn't even a video, just a plain PowerPoint presentation, not narrated, just a PowerPoint right off my computer. I uploaded it to slideshare.net. And within a couple days, I had 500 views, over 500 views in two days. Another one had over 700 views in three days. And again, this is, you know, typically a lot more viewership or interaction than you would get on YouTube, for example. So if you have existing PowerPoint presentations, you can upload them to SlideShare and get some great exposure with them. The other neat thing about SlideShare, this is what the, uh, the home screen looks like, is you can embed YouTube videos within your PowerPoint presentation. So you see there's a little um, flap on there that says YouTube video inside. So it's a great way to uh, add video to your presentations as well. So I've got here my, my uh, Video Marketing Advantage presentation. Um, you can see that there is a YouTube video within here. I can embed YouTube videos within the presentation. The other thing that you can do on the paid version is you can generate a lead form or a contact form. So you see that little yellow get in touch button. Um, out of all those hundreds of people watching my presentation, if someone wants more information, they can click the get in touch button, fill out a form that will come to me, and it turns out to be a great lead generator. The other neat thing about SlideShare, as you can see on the top banner here, is that once you've got your presentation uploaded, again, lots of sharing options, like buttons, tweet buttons, uh, LinkedIn, Google+, a lot of ways to spread your message. So again, uh, another sort of hidden gem, slideshare.net, great way to share both PowerPoint presentations and videos as well. Now again, I mentioned this earlier, but if you want to uh, add video to LinkedIn, one of the ways you can do that is through the SlideShare app. So you go to LinkedIn, get the SlideShare app, which is free, and then you can pull in your SlideShare presentations into your LinkedIn profile. So that video marketing advantage that you just saw on SlideShare a couple minutes ago, you see it's here on my LinkedIn profile via the SlideShare app. Let's move on and look at yet another way to make social video, and this one is with Prezi.com. Now, you may have seen Prezi.com. It's uh, sort of like PowerPoint on steroids. Prezi, Prezi allows you to make moving presentations or dynamic 
presentations that zoom and move and flip and all kinds of cool stuff. It's pretty easy to use because you can start with their templates. And when you're done with your Prezi presentation, you can share it to Twitter and Facebook. And they even have an iPad version. So let me show you a bit what that looks like. This is the Prezi home page where you can sign up for free and create moving presentations or basically like animated PowerPoints. So check out Prezi, Prezi.com, P-R-E-Z-I. P -R -E -Z -I, and you'll find there that when you go to their templates, you just open one of their templates and replace, cut and paste. Uh, you can add your own content so that you can zoom or move or it's just a really cool way to make your presentations um, a lot more interesting, a lot more dynamic and uh, somewhat animated. Moving right along, let's talk about Montage Mojo with Animoto and other sites that are similar to Animoto.com. Really great way to make a cool video is, as I mentioned earlier, video montages. Um, you can use these easy video creation sites, some of which we looked at before, uh, some we haven't talked about, like Animoto.com, which is probably the best known of the bunch, OneTrueMedia.com, SlideMotion.com is another one, and Stupaflix.com. Again, all these sites are free to try, free to use. Uh, some of them do have paid versions, but it's a great way to get started and dip your toes into the video waters. Animoto.com, for example, you can create 30-second um, videos for free. So with Animoto, like the other sites, you basically add photos, you add music, you add text, and you're on your way to a really cool looking video montage. Now, Animoto.com um, does have, if you want to create longer than 30 second videos, they have paid versions that start at $5 a month, so very affordable ways to get past that 30 second limitation that they have on the free account. Another favorite is slidemotion.com. This one was introduced to me by my friend Denise Wakeman, who you can see she's in uh, the video that I created below here. Um, again, just a great way and an easy way to create videos using photos or images and music. Um, slidemotion.com. Once again, uh, you'll notice the, uh, the ever-present sharing buttons so when your video is complete you can send it to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Plus, etc. So all these sites give you the opportunity to share your video when it's done and I encourage you to do that because that's the way you get it out in the world and get more people to see it. And then there's stupaflix.com which we touched upon earlier um, one of my favorite sites because again all you do is pick a theme or a template as you can see on the left hand side here they have several different templates and then you add your photos or video or music um, you can pull in photos from Facebook you can pull in photos from Flickr or Picasa you can upload your own images and videos from your computer um, and just pull those in create your video add music and you're on your way Again, a lot of share buttons here, uh, a lot of easy ways to spread your video once it's complete. And then again, there's one truemedia.com, which was one of my old standbys. Um, drag and drop simplicity, pull in your photos, select your music, maybe uh, throw a slide at the beginning, a text slide. Um, if you have the paid version, you have a few more bells and whistles, but even with the uh, free version, there's an awful lot you can do with OneTrueMedia.com. Great way to create photo montages. And last but not least, uh, more another way to make social video is with animation. And this animation is so simple that you type and the characters talk. So these are videos where you can basically let your cartoon characters do the talking for you. Their text to voice websites. So really you can do just about anything. You're only limited by your imagination. The two sites that I use, again free to sign up, free to use, are GoAnimate.com and ExtraNormal.com. Extra normal with an X.
And GoAnimate.com allows you to make really cool animated videos. Um, they give you a whole bunch of templates. The one that they show here is like an election cartoon or election template, but you can change your characters, you can change your backgrounds, you can change your setting, and you can basically um, get your characters to say whatever you type in, whatever you want them to say. So what I would do with GoAnimate.com, oops, my slide got mushed again, but that's okay, uh, was I'll create, you know, a little video about video marketing. So I've got my two characters and they're talking about video marketing and whatever I typed, they will say. So um, I just put them in this little classroom setting here. I don't know why they don't have arms or legs or necks. That must come with the premium version. But uh, again, um, you know, the characters are already there. You basically just put words in their mouth and you're on your way. So really easy, fun way to create little cartoons and uh, have them act out your message. The other site is extranormal.com. Um, this site, again, gives you a lot of different characters, a lot of different settings, backgrounds, and then you just type or record your dialogue that you want them to say, and the quote-unquote actors will lip-sync your words. The cool thing about extranormal.com is if you don't like the funny little um, accents or you know robotic voices that they have, you can actually record your own narration and have your characters say what you record. So you can see on the right they've got all different backgrounds and settings and different ways of using it. Um, Extra Normal um, is pretty basic. If you want to get real fancy and get different backgrounds and settings then you have to buy points basically or you have to uh, buy more points and pay for the privilege of using you know special characters or special backgrounds. But there's a lot you can do just with the free version so give it a shot. And again They've got a lot of different kinds of formats and genres. Here's a sort of a stick figure one where you pick your characters, you pick the sound effects, you pick the background. Um, you can record or you can type in the dialogue that you want them to say. So it's uh, pretty easy. And you see up here on the right, this is where you buy your points if you want to add more bells and whistles to the cartoon. So, oh, we forgot about, almost forgot about the fifth way to make social videos, which is live video interviews. Now, you can use Skype or Google Hangouts or uh, uvu.com, O-O-V-O-O, -O -O, one of my favorite sites, and you can basically create a, an interview scenario and record that and use that as your video. You can do, you know... Um, interview your colleagues or clients or other folks that you know and I do these typically with Uvu and then I record them with Uvu but I also run a backup recording on Camtasia just to make sure that I've got it. Oh here's the shot that I was looking for for my live video interviews. Um, so again uh, you can see that I did this on Uvu.com and I was interviewing my friend Ruth Sherman. We're both on screen with our webcams. And uh, as you can see, we've got you know, backgrounds that are relatively neutral. But you can see what a nice interface it is and that you create you know, basically a live video recording and a live interview with this Ufu technology, which again is free to use. They do have a fancier paid version, but they also have a free version. So I did um, you know, an hour-long interview as I was doing my video bunch interviews, and I used Ufu.com to create all of these interview series. Um, and recorded them so that I would have them as videos. So again, you can connect with webcasting. It's a great way to connect. You can use uh, live stream, actually livestream.com. The live stream video viewing is up by over 600% this year. So uh, webcasting besides video interviews is another alternative to do that. Um, basically, you can have your own web TV channel instantly for free, which allows you to go live on the web anytime, anywhere. And the two big players for webcasting are Ustream.tv and Livestream.com. Now here's a quick picture of Livestream in action here. Um, my colleague and friend Elizabeth Marshall was doing some live webcasting to promote an upcoming event, and she did a series of webcasts. You can see here within the live stream 
interface. Um, Liz is on the left-hand side here. That's her on her webcam. And her desktop is on the right-hand side. So one of the nice things about this is that you can switch from your webcam to your desktop and go back and forth. The other neat thing is that you've got your live chat on the right-hand side so that you can interact with your viewers and chat with them at the same time. You can answer questions. Uh, live stream tells you how many viewers you have, which in this case she had 20 people watching. Uh, it allows you to tweet or uh, send a notice to Facebook that you are live casting so people can tune in live while you're doing that. And it records the shows and archives them so that you have your previous shows recorded. So a couple, you know, um, Elizabeth had an hour long show, an hour and 13 minute show previously. Um, just a great way to interact, another way to use video that's very compelling and interactive because it's live. Finally, uh, another way to create very cool, compelling social videos is with video email, to engage with video email. Uh, one of the interesting statistics that we've seen because email uh, open rates have not been so great is that video in email can actually double your email open rates. And according to small business trends, video in email increases click-through rates by 96%. So if you want more response, if you want to get your emails opened, try putting video into your email. And there are two free ways that I like to use to do that, and those include mailview.com, M-A-I-L-V-U.com, and ijot.com. And we have a screenshot here of mailview.com, which is one of my favorites. You just um, need a webcam, and as it says here, it's as simple as click, record, and send. Um, great way to follow up with uh, prospects and clients. You can do up to 10 minutes on these videos. Um, it will play on most smartphones. You can do it from your iPhone. Um, the person on the other end doesn't have to sign up to MailView or anything like that. They just get a message that is a video message that you have sent to them. Pretty cool. So you'll see here the way that it looks when it shows up in the inbox. It'll just say, you've got video mail. And you click on the picture there, and you get my video message. And that is using MailView.com. The other site is called iJot.com, and it's very similar to MailView. Basic, uh, it's basically the same, same kind of... Uh, content and uh, same features uh, free again to join you record your video email send it to the person you want to send it to and it's that simple so I show I hope that I have showed you a lot of different ways to uh, create videos but I do want to kind of uh, emphasize that the reality check here is that you really need to have some kind of a plan um, oh there goes Bailey the dog hi Bailey um, all kinds of interesting stuff going on behind the scenes here. So uh, you want to know what you're going to do before you just dive in because there are so many different ways you can use video that you want to think about your goals and your objectives and create a plan to help video marketing do that. So you want to have a video marketing strategy. You want to integrate video into your existing marketing plans. You want to you know, repurpose blog posts or articles or e-zines. You can turn all of that into video marketing. Think about how video can support your overall promotional plans and proceed that way. I like to create a video visibility strategy to maximize exposure. And again, if you're posting videos to social media sites and sharing them all over, you're going to create a lot of visibility. So use video to create more effective sales pages, blog posts, basically anything you can do with marketing, you can do with video marketing. That's all we have for today. Uh, if you would like more information, feel free to email me at vip at lubortone.com or follow me on Twitter at lubortone or friend me on Facebook at facebooklu.com. So thanks again for watching and uh, remember to visit lubortone.com for more information.